Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's Friday Reflections on this, the 16th of October 2020. Uh, Jumma Mubarak. Uh, to, I hope everybody is well um, and, and your families and things in your lives. Uh, today, what I would like to uh, discuss is from the Quran. It's from Surah Al Baqarah, a few verses. And so, this is what I would like to do the Friday Reflections on today. Um, I'm going to be reading from this Quran, a translation by Dr. Safi Kaskas. If you're looking for a good English translation of the Quran that is very clear and easy to understand, I highly recommend this translation by Dr. Safi Kaskas. No translation is perfect, but you know, and it's good to read different translations, but this translation is one of the clearest and most easy to read that I have come across so far. And I'm going to be reading from uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, that's uh, the second Surah of the Quran, from uh, verses 168 to 177. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. People, eat of what is permitted and delicious on earth. Do not follow Satan's steps. He is clearly your enemy. He commands you to do evil and to behave shamelessly and to say things about God you do not know. If they are told, follow that which God has revealed, they say rather we will follow what we found our fathers doing even though our fathers did not understand anything and were not guided. Unbelievers are like the ones who call out to that which hears nothing more than a scream and cry. They are deaf, dumb and blind. They do not comprehend. Believers, eat the good things we provided you and thank God if you truly worship him. He has forbidden you to eat dead animals, blood, pork and meat offered in any name other than God. If someone is forced to do so unwillingly and unintentionally, he does not sin. God is forgiving and merciful to all. Those who hide part of what God has revealed in the book and barter it away for a small price, will consume nothing in their bellies except fire. And God will neither speak to them on the day of resurrection, nor purify them. They will have a painful punishment. It is they who accept misguidance in exchange for guidance, and punishment in exchange for forgiveness. Yet they have no tolerance for the fire, that is because God revealed the book in truth. And those who differed about the book are deeply divided. Righteousness is not a matter of turning your faces eastward or westward. Rather, righteousness is believing in God and the last day, and the angels and the book, the prophets, giving money for the love of him to relatives, orphans, the poor, stranded travellers, beggars, and to free slaves, performing prayers, paying the purifying alms, keeping promises, and enduring misery and hard times in time of threat. It is they who have proved themselves true, and it is they who are mindful of God. Now, I'm going to go through these verses again and just comment a little bit upon them because in these particular verses there is encapsulated a lot of what the true spirit and meaning of Islam is about. Firstly, let's go back to this verse. People, eat what is permitted and delicious on earth. Do not follow Satan's steps. He is clearly your enemy. 
he commands you to do evil and to behave shamelessly and to say things about God you do not know. This ayah starts off by saying people eat of what is permitted and delicious on earth. It's actually, it's written like a command from God to eat what is permitted and delicious on earth. Very important point here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to enjoy ourselves. Not in a uh, shameful way, not in a way which is causing harm to other people or destroying the planet, but in a way which is in harmony with other people and in harmony with nature. Allah wants us to in, enjoy life. Allah wants us to enjoy the, the fruits, the meats, the vegetables, and all the other foods that are made with them that Allah has provided us with. If we do not enjoy that and do not thank Allah, we are behaving thanklessly towards Allah. And it's, it's strange when you think about it that this is part of the same verse as do not follow Satan's steps, he is clearly your enemy. He commands you to do evil and to behave shamelessly and to say things. Oh, so then it carries on into the second ayah, uh, 169. He commands you to do evil and to behave shamelessly and to say things about God you do not know. There's a connection here between eating what is permitted and delicious on the earth and then Allah is saying, don't go and follow what Satan does. Well, what does Satan do? Satan perverts things. Satan turns things around. So what is a blessing for us? Satan makes out it is not a blessing. He turns the blessings into curses. This is what Satan does. Things which are good for us, Satan will turn around and say it's haram, it's wrong for us. Even though those things are perfectly halal for us. There's only a limited number of things which Allah has made haram for us, and this is for our own good. Drinking is not good for us. Sure, we can go ahead and do it. I mean, we'll be breaking, as Muslims, we'll be breaking our religious teachings. But if we go and drink, we're going to harm our bodies. It's scientifically proven when you drink alcohol, it burns the esophagus, and if you drink, uh, if you drink it regularly, it damages your liver. This is not, you know, this is not just me saying it. It's not just something that's written in an old book. It's not just something which Mulanas and Sheikhs are saying. It, it's, it's scientifically proven fact. But we've got free will. If people want to do that, some people will go and do it. That's drinking. Eating pork. There's a lot of risks associated with it. Now, sure, we improve farming standards and, uh, you know, agricultural hygiene and, and stuff like this. So now some of the parasites that, po that pigs would traditionally carry are less common in farmed animals than what they would be uh, even 100 years ago. But that does not mean that there's no risk. And besides that, uh, pigs carry have a lot of saturated fat in their meat, even in the actual meat itself, as, as well as the fat that's all around it, which is also proven to be bad for us. And then, of course, when you've got eating dead animals, um, which is mentioned a bit further on in uh, here, I'll read a bit further. Um, so you see in the ayah I read before, he has forbidden you to eat dead animals, blood, pork and meat offered in any name other than God. Why dead animals? Dead animals would be like carrion. Animals that have died naturally or been killed by other animals and they've just been left out and they're, they're starting to, to rot. There's obvious risk associated with eating an animal that you do not know how it was killed, you do not know how long it was dead. Allah is not telling us don't eat this because it is something which is good for us. Allah is telling us not to eat it because it's bad for us. Similarly, blood. If you eat blood, 
a lot of germs are carried in the blood. Also, if an animal's uh, ingested uh, toxic things and it's got toxins in its body, those toxins are going to be concentrated in the blood. So if you eat an animal, so, or sorry, if you drink the animal's blood, then you're more at risk of any bad things that happen to be in that animal is going to be ingested by yourself. So these are, you know, not good for us. Uh, the, the last one mentioned here is meat offered in any name other than God. A couple of reasons for this. If it's meat offered uh, in a name other than God, it's probably done by another religious group. Um, you don't know what standards they are keeping to in when they, they kill the animal. So there's there's a practical side to it there. You don't know if they're, if they're doing it in a hygienic way necessarily. Uh, there's concerns from that perspective. There is also spiritual concerns because if you're eating uh, um, food that has had uh, the other religious uh, incarnations, maybe even witchcraft, um, then maybe there's some negative energy that you will pick up from eating that. Um, but notice this one's mentioned last. The first one is don't eat dead animals. Carrion, which is more risky. And then blood, which is probably not as risky as eating dead animals, but is still risky. Then pork, which is probably not as dangerous as eating blood. The last one is animals that have been sacrificed in a name other than God's. There's an order here. Why isn't the order the other way around? Because it's in an order of, of seriousness. But then, Allah says, and this is a very important point, if someone is forced to do so unwillingly and unintentionally, he does not sin. So either if a person is forced to eat something, which is haram for them, there's no sin on their part because they can't help what they're doing. They've been forced to do it. And that could be whether they're being forced, um, you know, in some kind of concentration camp and they're being forced to eat pork. Or it could be because they're forced by circumstance. For instance, if you are living on a little desert island somewhere and there's hardly anything to eat and you're literally starving and if you don't eat that animal then you're going to you're going to die of starvation you're forced by circumstance you're not forced because of any other reason but you're forced by circumstance so equally there wouldn't be uh, a sin upon you and actually it would be incumbent upon you in that situation to eat it if it would save your life because saving of life is sacred it's a sacred duty of a muslim And Allah emphasizes, God is forgiving and merciful to all. God is forgiving and merciful to all. How many people read these verses in the Quran and read the prohibitions and forget these verses where Allah is saying that he is forgiving and merciful to all? And this follows straight after Allah says that he is forgiving and merciful to all. Those who hide part of what God has revealed in the book and barter it away for a small price will consume nothing in their bellies except fire and God will neither speak to them on the day of resurrection nor purify them. They will have a painful punishment. Now who are these people? Who are these people? who hide part of what Allah has revealed and barter the, the teachings away for a small price. Why does Allah regard this as so, so serious? Because these are people who are misguiding other people. And who does this? Who misguides people in the way of religion? Is it people who are very secular? Is it atheists? Who does this? Religious teachers do this. 
people who preach. They are the ones that if they become corrupt, they start to recite the verses from the Quran. They start to recite a hadith. But then they give the wrong meaning. Or they recite the verses about punishment in order to get control over people. But they forget to read God is forgiving and merciful to all. Or if they do, they don't emphasize it. The repentant sinner is more beloved to Allah than the person who thinks themselves perfect. Because Allah made us this way. Allah made us human beings that will make mistakes. Human beings who will slip up at times. Human beings who will sin. Allah made us in this way. And it's, it's so that we can actually develop and learn and become better human beings. If we were meant to be angels, Allah would have created us as angels. And we wouldn't even be living on this earth. We wouldn't have this type of life. We're not meant to be angels. And that doesn't mean we go the other way and be devils. You know, human beings have choice. But if we make mistakes sometimes, then as long as we repent, as long as we make tawbah and ask Allah's forgiveness, Allah will forgive us. Allah is looking to forgive us. Allah is looking to guide us. Allah is not looking to, you know, fill the hellfire with human beings. And it's a very important point that we understand this. And the people who, they use religion to misguide other people, to have control over them, or to abuse them in some way. Those who hide part of what God has revealed in the book and barter it away for a small price will consume nothing in their bellies except fire, and God will neither speak to them on the day of resurrection nor purify them. They will have a painful punishment. So always remember that. And Allah goes on. It is they who accept misguidance in exchange for guidance and punishment in exchange for forgiveness. Yet they have no tolerance for the fire. They're very quick to be telling other people, you will go to hell, you will burn, you are not a Muslim. But they can't tolerate that themselves. They wouldn't be able to cope with that themselves. So why, if anybody, you know, sometimes people comment on my videos and my articles and say, well, I'm, I'm very sweet in the way I approach Islam. I always look at it from a beautiful perspective. I'm not um, preaching to people that they're going to go to hell or something. And that's because I genuinely believe most people won't be going to hell. Allah is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. How can Allah create all of us human beings and create this beautiful world just to burn us? That's not why Allah created us. Allah is a loving, benevolent God. If that were not the case, the trees would not be so beautiful. The sky would not be blue. The, the way things are laid out would not be the way they are. The natural world is beautiful. It's only when humans start to uh, abuse it and corrupt it that the world becomes dirty and disgusting. This is not how Allah created the world. And it's not how Allah created the universe. The way the earth is just the right distance from the sun, that it's not too hot and not too cold. Allah loves us, every single one of us. Allah loves creation. This, this, is, this is Allah's art. And anybody who has created art or created any kind of um, beautiful things, would they want to burn those things? And surely the creator of the universe who's created all this doesn't want to burn us. Allah warns us. When Allah teaches these things, Allah is warning us. It's like you've got road signs on the motorway and they are saying there's an accident ahead. Slow down. 
because the people who run the motorway don't want you speeding down that motorway and crashing into the cars in front that have already had an accident or crashing into the barriers or crashing into the police cars and fire engines that are already there. They're warning you. This is what these warnings are for in the Quran. Because Allah has given us free will, that also means that there are consequences for our actions. Now we can either learn here and learn it from the, the wisdom and advice Allah has given us in the Qur'an and through the prophets of Allah and through the awliya who Allah inspires. Or we can miss all of that and learn it the hard way when we pass on into the next life. We will still have to face it, one way or another. And then Allah continues, Righteousness is not a matter of turning your faces eastward or westward. Rather, righteousness is believing in God and the last day, the angels, the book and the prophets. And then, giving money for the love of him to relatives, orphans, the poor, stranded travellers, beggars and to free slaves, performing prayers, paying the purifying alms, that's charity, keeping promises and enduring misery and hard times in time of threat. It is they who have proved themselves true and it is they who are mindful of God. In other words, what is all of this? What is all of this? Righteousness is not about turning your face eastwards or westward. What is that a reference to? When we read Salah, we pray east or west depending on where we are in the world. And the Jews did this previously. A lot of religions, they pray in a direction. Allah is saying it doesn't really matter where you're praying. There's a reason we read Salah. And it does, if we read it with the pure intention, and we do it with the right kind of concentration and consciousness, Salah connects us with Allah. Actually, if you don't know where Qibla is and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you can put your prayer mat any direction because all directions point to Allah. It's just a matter of organization because imagine if we did that in the mosque, everybody would be banging their heads against each other. You know, we'd be tripping over each other. It would be a mess. So that's why we all pray in a certain direction. But actually, Allah is in front of us wherever we stand, wherever we bow. But that's not righteousness. That's prayer. And Allah emphasizes this. Righteousness is believing in... So the first beliefs, because you have to have beliefs first. You have to believe in something. In this case, believing in God, the last day, the angels, the book and the prophets. What is that? A belief in Islam. You know, that's a foundational belief. But then, Allah continues. Allah doesn't leave it there and say, just believe. Giving money for the love of him to relatives. Giving money for the love of Allah to relatives, to orphans, poor people, travellers, especially stranded travellers, beggars, and to free slaves. Interesting that point in there. You get some people trying to use the Quran today to justify the promotion of slavery. Allah is encouraging us to free slaves. The Quran talks about slavery. It's not encouraging it. It's trying to do away with it. Performing prayers, paying the uh, paying charity, giving promises, and enduring misery and hard times in the, in time of threat. In other words, what is all of this? It's living. Righteousness is living righteously, helping people, giving charity, living life in a good way that's a blessing to yourself, to your family, to orphans, to poor people. Being a blessing to people. Allah blesses us. And if we become a blessing to other people in how we live, then Allah will love us even more. Because we are doing something that Allah does for, for everyone and for all creation. So it's how you live. This is a most, most important point. And it's emphasized here. Not just have the beliefs. The beliefs should lead to that. If you really believe in Allah, if you really believe in the last day, if you really believe in Allah's messengers and the angels and, you know, the book, 
then you will live accordingly. If you just pay lip service to the Qur'an, if you just pay lip service to Islam and say, I'm a Muslim, Ashadu Allah, ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna muhammadu rasulullah, and then you don't do anything, what kind of a Muslim? If a person believes in something, they act upon what they believe. Now, of course, we all have different abilities and different degrees of what we are capable of doing. So Allah will take this into account and, you know, will not expect everybody to perform exactly to the same level because Allah knows who is given more ability and who is given less ability, who is given more responsibility, who is given less responsibility. If you are a king or a governor or a politician in a country, Allah will expect a lot more of you than what he expects of someone who's just an, you know, a carpenter or someone who works on the roads or a cleaner. Allah will not expect the same from them because they have less responsibility, they have less ability to be able to affect the surroundings and the people around them and the society in which they live. So the more Allah gives you, whether that's more money, whether that's more power, whether that's more influence, the more Allah gives you, the more Allah will expect from you because you are capable of achieving more. So, it, but either way, whichever level in society we're at, you know, if we really believe, then we will act on those beliefs to whatever ability that we are able to do. And this is what Allah will be looking for, looking at our beliefs, looking at our hearts, looking at our intentions and looking at how we behave in our society. I hope you find these messages useful. I hope this helps to bring out some of the, the true spirit of what Islam is that is taught within the Holy Quran and that you will benefit from this. If you have any questions, please post your questions. Um, you can post them live or even when I go off live and uh, I post the videos online, you can post the questions on the videos. If they are a bit more of a personal nature and you don't want to share publicly, you can send me your questions uh, through inbox or through email. Um, and I'm quite happy to uh, shed my, if I have any insights on them or if I, I have any uh, answers to share those with you. And if I don't, then I will no doubt have a good idea where you can look to find those answers and I will share that with you. Um, may Allah bless you all and uh, make things easier for you in your lives and especially as we are still going through these times when there are lockdowns and restrictions because of Covid. Um, we are living in testing times but testing times can be a blessing. Uh, so let's approach them as understanding that the real test is from Allah and everything that manifests in this world is just a test from Allah and so you know let's approach it in a positive way and learn what we can from these testing times and inshallah Allah will reward us uh, either in this life or in the next life or inshallah in both uh, may Allah bless you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu